Hey everyone, Nima Dog Bandon here with Jurassic LLP. In today's edition of Oh My God, California, what are you up to now? SB 1079. You probably already saw an email from us or maybe uh, our summary of it that went out. A lot of questions on it. I'm going to give you guys just kind of a very high level summary and then also give you an idea of uh, where you can learn more information about this as we are going to have a webinar on 1079 as well as another bill, AB 3088, that we've been discussing recently that also completely changes foreclosure here in the state of California. So let's talk about 1079 and what you need to know as a private lender. So the first thing is that the bill goes into effect on January 1, 2021, and it applies to all loans secured by one to four family residential property. It doesn't matter whether it was business purpose, consumer purpose, makes no difference. If your collateral is a one to four family property, this bill is going to apply. So let's talk about some of the things that the bill actually did. The first is it's going to modify the content of the notice of sale that your trustee publishes. So there's additional language we'll have to incorporate into that notice of sale. The next thing is it changed the way that cross collateralized loans work. Traditionally, if you had multiple properties on a single deed of trust, you would go to an auction and you could sell all five or 10 or whatever number of properties were sitting on that deed of trust in one single sale action. Generally speaking, you can't do that anymore and you have to sell each individual property on that deed of trust separately. And there's a lot of ramifications behind that that are well beyond this little short video clip. Next, let's start talking about what really is the heavy impact of this one. This is where California just went crazy because ultimately is they really fundamentally reshaped when marketable title in an auction occurs, and they basically created a right of first refusal. And it makes no sense. So the justification of our legislatures was they think that by doing this, they'll bring in a possibility of affordable housing. We'll talk about it in detail, never gonna happen. This is just gonna create a fraud system over here in California with a bunch of straw buyers and it's nonsense, but that's my rant for another day. So let's talk about what it does briefly. First is a prospective purchaser can submit a bid to purchase the property within 15 days. So the option closed, uh, you had a final person either went back to the lender or went to a third party, option was closed. Traditionally, that means the property was transferred as soon as that trustee deed records. Now, a person can come in within 15 days after the auction and say, I actually wanna bid more than what the property was sold for at foreclosure. And so they get basically a second chance to bid on it, even though they never showed up to the auction. There's also extraordinary rights for the tenants. So a tenant can also bid within that 15 day window, but they don't actually have to bid in, all they have to bid is the same amount it went for at auction, right? So if it's a $200,000 loan, you close it at $200,000, the tenant comes in and says, actually, I want the property, I want it at $200,000. I don't care that it went to a third party at $200,000. I actually want the property for myself they can just submit it for the same amount and it has to go to the tenant. The next thing here is that um, all other owners basically into, an, into a blind bidding system. So for example, if, if I want to go and I just start looking at the auction rules after they close and I can say, oh, that property went for $300,000 of foreclosure. I'd like it for 350. I would take it for 350. I can submit a bid to the trustee within that 15 day window and say, I actually want this property and I'm willing to pay 350 for it. And you create a, a uh, blind bidding process in the background with the trustee. And then no matter whether it was a tenant or whether it was this prospective purchaser, I need to perform within 45 days after the sale. And by perform, I mean, I need to stroke that check for whatever that bid amount is, right? So as soon as you stroke the check and the, and the trustee gets the check, then that person, not the person who won at auction, ends up getting the property. And so, We've truly changed how the system works here. The last thing to note on here is that um, they've also imposed a pretty significant fine regime to deal with vacant properties. So uh, there was issues with abandoned properties and um, California is trying to deal with that issue of abandoned properties by saying is we're actually gonna create two to, two to $5,000 a day fines if you end up owning the property through foreclosure and you, and you know, for example, vagrants or transients end up entering the property and staying there. You could actually get fined pretty hefty amounts on a daily basis. So what do you need to do? Uh, the big thing here is, is one, it's why we exist, right? So as an organization, we really wanna take what is happening out there from legislation and news and make it relevant for you because you've probably heard conflicting advice or conflicting information related to these bills 
or maybe you just don't know how it affects you. You know, you may want to know: is, does this apply to business purpose loans? Does this apply to commercial properties? Like, you probably just want to know: how do I use this information? And that's what we're here for. So, we're going to have a free webinar. There's going to be links up here or down here. I don't know how the system works, but there's going to be a link somewhere here. And in that link, we're going to talk to you about what I just talked about: SB 1079, a true application guide to that as well as AB 3088. That was the bill, if you guys remember, that recently passed that also modified foreclosures. It's, it, it basically advanced what we call the Homeowner's Bill of Rights to a whole subclass of one of four family secured loans where you basically have to give the, the borrower uh, notice prior to recording a notice of default and, you, and they may have loss mitigation options available to them. So we're gonna unpack basically how do you foreclose here in California now knowing that these two bills came in and they affect what happens before you record a notice of default, and now what happens after a trustee sale. So we're gonna bookend the whole process here in California and give you the rules of the road. So know that we're here for you. We're excited about this. Wanna give you kind of a quick high level understanding of what um, just happened here. But again, we'll do a deep dive. Thank you for listening. Hope you're all safe out there. Take care.